Applications may need to work based on different databases. Although the SQL syntax is generally consistent, differences still exist, necessitating modifications to these SQL statements. Such modifications often require manual adjustments, resulting in a significant workload and increased potential for errors. Fully automating SQL transformation is nearly impossible, due to the varying functionalities of different databases. However, upon closer examination, it becomes clear that most issues stem from differences in the syntax of SQL functions. Especially for functions related to dates and strings, there is no standard in the industry and each database has its own approach. For example, converting the string 2022.5 into a date, different databases have different expressions for this. Oracle uses the toDate function. SQL Server uses the convert function. MySQL, on the other hand, uses date format. If application need to switch between different databases, the SQL statements must be rewritten. SPL offers a SQL conversion function for this scenario allowing a certain standard SQL and to be converted to statements for different databases, thus enabling seamless SQL migration during database switching. The SQL translate function in SPL can translate simple SQL functions defined in SPL into the syntax of various databases. The SQL here is the SQL statement that needs to be translated, and DB type is the database type. Functions need to be defined in SPL simple SQL. Undefined ones will not be translated. The list of defined functions and database types can be found in the SQL translate function help. Let's first try an SPL's IDE to convert this SQL statement into syntax corresponding to different databases. You can see that the add days function has been translated into different syntax for various databases. Some functions have significant different forms across different databases. For this example, when adding 10 to the month, SQL Server uses the date add function, while MySQL and PostgreSQL directly add it, and Oracle combines the two in its statement. The quarter function is available in various databases, but there are significant differences in the names and parameters used for the function. There are also different type conversion functions, with significant variations in function names and formatting across databases. These differences can all be addressed using SPL SQL Translate. The database types and function definitions supported by SPL are located in the dictionary file comsku.admsequelfunction.xml in the sparkbin.jar release package. The functions node represents a function group, type is the function group type, and fixpram represents a function group with a fixed number of parameters. The function node represents a simple SQL function, where name is the function name, param count is the number of parameters, value is the default value when translating the function, and an empty string indicates no need for translation. The info node represents a database, DB type is the database name, empty string indicates simple SQL of SPL, and value is the corresponding value, when translated to this database. In the value question mark, or question mark 1 represents the value of the first parameter of the function, question mark 2 represents the second parameter value of the function, and so on. When the value in info is an empty string, the value of the parent node function is used. When translating, if there is no info node definition for the specified database under the function node, this function remains unchanged and will not be translated. SPL defines many functions in function.xml, but not all of them. In practice, you may encounter new functions and can add them on your own. For example, to calculate the difference in days between two dates, we can add a function node, define the date diff function name, and configure the corresponding database syntaxes in the info node. Similarly, to add support for other databases, simply include the info node information and configure the new database. For instance, we need to add support for SQLite here to implement the translation of date differences by days. The earlier function examples featured fixed parameters, but there are scenarios where the number of parameters isn't predetermined, such as in string concatenation, case when statements, and retrieving the first non-null value from multiple parameters. SPL supports dynamic numbers of parameters by configuring the function's nodes type to any param, allowing for any number of parameters. We need to create corresponding Java classes for each database's corresponding function. For example, 
To add support for Oracle's string function concat, we can write the code, compile it, and place it in the comsku.ad msql oracle path within the sbrkbin.jar. Then configure the translation class corresponding to oracle and function.xml. Restart the IDE after modifying the jar. Let's try it out. It can be seen that when concatenating three parameters and converting them to Oracle syntax, it becomes a concatenation of double vertical bars, while when the target database is sbrk, it uses lowercase concat. At this point, we have learned how to use translation functions, configure them, and add functions and databases, including handling situations with uncertain numbers of parameters. Next, let's learn how to integrate in applications. SPL and application integration is very simple. Just import these two jars into the application, and then place the SPL configuration file in the application's class path. RaxOffConfig.xml is the core configuration file of SPL, and its name cannot be changed. It is required for subsequent data source and gateway configurations. Let's first look at the situation where the application only has a single database. The simplest way to use SPL SQL translation function in applications is to use SQL translate to translate SQL into the syntax of the target database and execute it. The API for translating SQL in SPL is com.scudata.dm.sql.sql.util.translate function, and it can be used directly to translate SQL statement. However, it should be noted that the SPL official recommendation is to use the JDBC interface instead of the API directly. Yet, writing a few lines of code to connect to JDBC solely for a string conversion can be cumbersome. So we opted to use the API directly. Additionally, we aim to make SQL migration as transparent as possible. Aside from the initial rewrite, there should be no need to modify or recompile the code when changing databases in the future. Just maintain the configuration file. Therefore, we store the database type in the configuration file. For example, we can create a database type configuration file called dbconfig.properties to specify the database type, such as MySQL. Then, we can encapsulate a translation method that calls SPL's API to implement SQL translation. The main program passes in SQL and calls the SQL translation. The following code remains unchanged, including setting parameters, executing SQL, and obtaining result sets. In fact, the only addition in the main program is one statement SQL equals translate SQL. The previous method requires an additional translation step for each SQL execution. If there are many SQLs, the changes to the original program can be substantial. Additionally, it utilizes interfaces that are not officially recommended, which may pose a risk of future incompatibility. To overcome these drawbacks, we can adopt a more transparent approach that translates SQL and executes it to obtain the result set directly within SPL. SPL supports standard JDBC. As long as the database driver and URL are switched to SPLs, the rest of the code can remain completely unchanged, eliminating the need for encapsulation methods or explicit translation. So, how is SQL translation implemented? It seems a bit magical. The key is the JDBC gateway of SPL. We can configure an SPL script in advance, and all SQL statements executed in JDBC will be handed over to this script for processing and execution. That is to say, the translation and execution of SQL are both done in the script. To use a JDBC gateway, we need to configure an SPL script in the JDBC node of raxsoftconfig.xml, such as gateway.splx configured here. The gateway script requires two parameters, one SQL parameter to receive SQL statements, and the other args parameter to receive parameters of the SQL statements, which are passed from JDBC to SQL. The below option, the last parameter is a dynamic parameter, needs to be checked in order to receive multiple parameters of the SQL statements. Let's take a look at the script content. Determine whether the DB name variable exists in A1, and if it does not exist, Call the initialization script in B1. This script reads the data source name and database type from the configuration file and places them in the global variables db type and db name using the env function. A2 translates SQL. It is no longer unfamiliar to us.
A3 calculates the number of parameters. B3 concatenates the parameters into a string. For example, when there are two parameters, the result of B3 is like this. A4 connects to data source. Where is this data source configured? We will explain soon. Let's keep looking first. A5 determines whether it is a select statement. We need to translate and execute all SQL statements, while DQL and DML statements have different execution methods and return values, so they need to be processed separately. If it is a select statement, B5 uses the db.query function to query and obtain results, where it X represents closing the database connection after querying. SPL macro are used here, and the statement replaced with macro is like this. A6 requires the use of the db.execute function to execute SQL statements for non-select statements. The overall script is not very complex, and future modifications to the script do not require restarting the application, as SPL is interpreted executed and supports hot swapping. The configuration information of the connected data source source can be found in the raxoffconfig.xml file. Simply add the corresponding data source connection information for the DB node configuration. Multiple data sources can be configured sequentially. Through this gateway script, DML statements such as update can also be executed. We will execute the update statement in the program and see that it will also be translated into the corresponding database statement, and the update is successful. All SQL can be seamlessly migrated. How should we handle situations where some applications may involve multiple databases? Let's first look at the usage of translation only. We still need to maintain the data source name and type in the configuration file. Add the following to dbsconfig.properties. The middle part before the equal sign represents the data source name while the part after indicates the data source type. Because there are multiple databases, we need to search for types based on the data source names. Translation method. Search for the type based on the data source name. Load the configuration file to obtain attributes, and translate SQL. This process is similar to what was previously mentioned, so we will not repeat it here. The main program passes SQL statements along with the data source name which can be my SQL DS or other sources. The SQL is then translated, followed by parameter setting, execution, and obtaining result sets, all of which are identical to the original program. We have discussed the advantages and disadvantages of translation alone earlier. Now let's explore the use of SPL gateway for translating and executing SQL. Here, separate connections are established for different data sources with an additional step to set the data source name. Data source parsing is handled in the gateway script, while the rest of the SQL execution remains fully consistent with the original program. The parameters are completely consistent with the previous single database gateway script. The gateway script for managing multiple databases needs to include a process for setting the data source name. A3 receives a parameter from the program to set the data source, which is specified as Set DS my SQL DS. If it starts with set DS, B3 will assign the data source name to the job variable DS name. The workspace of the job variable is the same connection. Next, all SQL statements within this data source can be run directly. B4 is similar. Search for the database type based on the data source list DBS and assign it to the job variable DB type. The script from A6 onward is identical to the single database version and will not be repeated here. This gateway script can still handle all SQL statements and allows for seamless migration. The above outlines everything we need to know about SQL migration in SPL. With SPL, switching databases doesn't require code changes, ensuring a seamless migration. Certainly, SPL's capabilities extend well beyond that. It also supports parallel execution of SQL data retrieval, facilitates cross-database queries, enables mixed computing between databases and other non-database sources, and leverages SPL's computing power to optimize SQL performance. We will gradually introduce these topics in future discussions. SPL is an open source software that can be obtained from GitHub.